Well, I'm just sitting here, the sun is rising. What are you going to do with the chicken? Don't touch that in your mouth. What are you going to do with it? We're looking for a crocodile. Oh, that feels so freaky. When are you giving the chicken? At the end when all the people... We've been in the Northern Territory for two weeks now and despite Luke's best efforts and dangerous efforts, we are yet to see a crocodile. The kids make do by feeding the crocodiles that are in the caravan park that we're staying at. But as fun as that is, we all decide that we want to see crocodiles in their natural environment. So we plan a trip to Kakadu. Is he going to eat the chicken? Chicken! Jump up! Do it! Oh no, he can't get it because he's got a broken jaw. You only get to one. Hey everyone, we are getting ready to head to Kakadu. So this week's video is all about our trip to Kakadu. So we are still in Darwin at the moment. We're fitting in some last minute internet time. Luke's trying to uh, send off a heap of emails back home for work and I am uploading last week's video. Um, and we're using free internet as much as we can before we hit the road, kakadu, and we'll be at a reception for about three or four days, and we'll go and explore some of the beautiful scenery around there. Kakadu is one and a half hours from Darwin. Our plan was to drive right into the heart of Kakadu to a place called Ubia. We would then take the southern road out past Jabiru and down past Yellow Water. But first, Luke was determined to see if he could catch an elusive barramundi before we left. Alright, we're off fishing. We've got a bit of a mud map from a local. We go up a gravel road. We go past four power poles. Then we turn right at the fallen tree. And then we head down towards the bank. And what did the guy at the shop just tell you? He said, just make sure you're up high enough, he goes, because there's some big lizards in there, if you know what I mean. So Luke's not going to sit on a chair in case he, um, was that four power poles? Alright, yeah. we've gone past four power poles. Yeah, yeah. There's the fallen tree, watch out. Bump. Yeah, so Luke's not going to sit down on a chair because he wants to be quick enough to get away from a crocodile. So we'll judge whether or not you're quick enough to get away from a crocodile. That's today's game. Come on the next video. How much fun! Here's all the zero cards. in for new one. trying to get the um, drone to work but I'm not having much luck it's a bit windy because this oh, it would be a mat well no actually in my uh, ability oh there's little fish down there oh wow look at that 
With no luck catching a barramundi, we make our way to Kakadu. The problem is Luke's getting more and more confident that the crocodiles aren't going to get him, seeing as he hasn't been caught yet. Jessie's girl. We said I had Jessie's girl. I can't find a woman like that. This is for Jessie. Jessie's girl. All right, so we just arrived in Kakadu National Park. Um, we left from Darwin, so it's about an hour and a half drive, and we are here for a couple of days. So we will show you around. We realise what complete tight asses we've become as we buy our parks pass. A hundred bucks, ouch. Is it really? Yeah. I it was like 50. It's not, it should be 50. Kids are free, 25 bucks per adult. No, children are at $20 each. Isn't that over a certain age? No. Two adults and two or more children, five to 15 years. Family, two adults and two children is $100. That sucks. I was sure I read online that it was only 25 bucks per adult. Mm. And the kids were free up to like 15. Should we go to this the Jabiru This is for one? a seven day one. Let's just go to Jabiru and buy it at the information center. And ask them. Yeah, stuff that. Okay. And it's a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks, we're only going to come once. We decide we'll have to head up to Jabiru and talk to a park ranger to make sure that we're not getting stung. We are just pulling up at an information centre. The last time we had to buy the pass online, but it was a hundred dollars. And that was for seven days, we're only here for three days. So we're just going to go and see if we can get it a little bit cheaper. The information centre is at a little stop called Aurora. The shop is filled with outback legends tackling crocodiles, so we know that we're certainly getting closer to where we want to be. But no luck with the parks pass. It's a firm $100 for seven days, so we have to open up the wallet and it stings the budget a little bit. Luke reluctantly fills in the paperwork once he realises that he can't talk the park rangers into giving us a better deal. Um, so we just stopped in at the, where are we? Aurora, I think, the Aurora campground, where we got um, our parks pass. Now that we have our pass, we will hop into the car and get to the campground. It's really hot today too. It's probably one of the hottest days that we've had up here, so it's gonna be a bit uncomfortable. Kakadu has six seasons and we arrived in the early dry season where the final burns were taking place. The burns are an important part of land management by the indigenous people and they help to encourage new growth. So we've just arrived at Car Hills Crossing which is um, the main road to Arnhem Land. So we're not allowed to drive over, but the locals do drive over. So I'll take you over and have a look. There's heaps of crocs here that come to catch the fish, um, especially on high tide. We've arrived at low tide. High tide's not till nine o'clock tonight, but we're gonna go and see if we can see some crocs. There is a car that apparently a year and a half ago they tried to cross in the wet season because they were trying to get home and they got washed away, but they got out safely, thank goodness. So we'll go have a look. In the wet season, Carhill Crossing is known to flood. And evidence of those that attempted the crossing in the floods is shown by the cars in the river on the left. While we stood here and watched the cars crossing, a number of crocs went up and down the river. Unfortunately, we just missed a four metre croc waddle across that crossing in front of all the people fishing. They simply stepped out of the way and let it pass. The locals are certainly pretty chilled about the crocs and Luke decided that when in Rome, do as the Romans do. No croc is going to stop him from his potential barramundi. Wow, amazing. We're checking out all the Aboriginal rock art. We actually missed the uh, sunset at Uber, unfortunately, but the rock art's amazing. So we're just having a quick look before they shut the gates because they shut them at sunset. So we're hoping we haven't gotten locked out. <laughs>
So this is the story of Marbu. Oh, sorry, I'm falling over rocks. And basically, to cut the, the story into a short story, this guy Marbu was fishing, and he had a fish on his line. He was pulling it in, and a bloke ran past and cut his line and stole his fish. So he waited until that night when they were they finished eating it and they all fell asleep. Him and his family, the guy that stole it, he was in the this cave and he blocked it with a rock, and he said, "There you go, you die." And they all died in there. That's a beautiful story. The lesson Mom, is Mom, not, look at the not to steal. Look up there, it's amazing. Oh wow, well, look at that one up there. See, look at that. Kakadu's rock art represents one of the longest historical records of any group of people in the world. More than 5,000 art sites tell of the creation ancestors and also first European contact. Oh, that's disgusting. Turn it around. Oh. They're black. So, what's, what's happening out there? Ah, I'll make a real mess. What's happening out there, Luke? The freaking mozzies are thick as. <laughs> Not happy, are you? The shit out of me while I was trying to do the dishes. So I'd like you to go outside because of your dirty feet, but you're refusing because of the mozzies. Killed him, probably. You nearly broke the, the light. light. So we're all hiding in here, aren't we? The driver's nuts. Because yep. we can't go outside. So we're. I don't recommend Merrill Camp, to be honest. It's I don't called, recommend going to Kakadu. Oh, Merrill Camp. So we have had um, an interesting night. Luke and I have had about four hours sleep and we're covered in mozzie bites. The mozzies in Kakadu are next level. <laughs> so it was almost like a scene from, uh, I would say, Jurassic Park, where there was moths the side of, size of birds flying outside our window. There were like, the mozzies, I can't even describe them. We were using... Jumanji. <laughs> we were using every grade strength of deep possible, which I don't even use because I use everything natural and they were just like, we don't even care. We don't even care about your deep. We are going to kill you. So we um, are very tired and we are getting out of here. We're going to go and have a look around um, some other parts of Kakadu today and then we are hightailing it um, out. It's an amazing place. We've absolutely loved being here, but um, it's hardcore. It's really full on. So we are just filling up some water and then we're going to go and have one more look at Cahill Crossing before we take the road down um, to see what else we can see on our way out of Kakadu. We're fishing at Carhill Crossing this morning, not something I endorse or recommend, um, but Luke doesn't listen to me. So, let's hope you don't catch a crocodile. I don't think anyone's catching anything anyway. But we're hoping to see some crocodiles as the, um, as the tide comes in. Apparently the crocodile eat the barramundi in the river so that's what kids and I are looking for. The evidence of those that have lost their lives to crocodiles at Car Hills Crossing is there for everyone to see. We learned a little bit later in the day that perhaps we shouldn't have been standing quite so close to the water's edge. Steve Irwin here. <laughs> What's the outcome of your fishing? No, no good. Lost me lure. So I'm taking you back ball and going home. <laughs> I cracked it. There's probably a thousand bucks worth of lures out there, I reckon, easy from the last couple of weeks. But no one's got game enough to get them. There's a big croc down here though on the bank. We're just looking to put the binoculars. And we can't catch any fish. <laughs> What are we doing on it? Um, we're going on a cruise and we're looking for big crocodiles and lots of bird life. Yeah, you think we'll see a crocodile? Yeah. This was your thing that you wanted to do, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, we better get going then. Yep. Find your thongs up there? No. Hmm, where are they? At this stage in our trip, we were yet to see a croc up close and personal in its natural environment, and it was something that we really wanted the kids to see before we left. 
we're not big touristy people and we don't like forking out for tourist attractions but we decided this time that it might be worth splashing out on the yellow water cruise so that we could really experience Kakadu and all that it has to offer. Doesn't look exactly how I imagined. <laughs> There's no uh, casino. There's no cinema. There's no cafe. No cafe. She's fairly... Oh, what's that in the water over there? Just a bird? Yeah, it's just a bird swimming. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, Mum. Looks like just a swan or something. Got to see crocodiles in their natural environment and so happy that we splashed out for this experience. 